What up? This is Raphael with NBA Draft Junkies. Got my brother James on here. And today we're going to break down our thoughts on Keon Johnson. Again, this is a, a different format that, that I'm using, but I just wanted to add something a little different. And I'll just have my brother or different guest, and we just give our opinions on, on different prospects. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. But let's get right into it. Keon Johnson. James, what yeah. are your thoughts on Keon Johnson? For those that don't know, Keon Johnson is this freakishly, just freakish athlete from Tennessee. I mean, I've seen him projected as a top 10 pick. Now, he's raw. He, he He's raw, but he has, you know, just elite athleticism. And, uh, and he's young, 6'5", 186 pounds, average 11 points per game. And, I mean, the raw numbers don't tell the whole story. But what are your thoughts on Keon Johnson? Like you said, he's extremely raw. Um, I don't know about being a top 10 pick, but there are, there are some things to like about him. Like you said, he's a supreme athlete, um, and he's an athlete with a motor. So, I mean, those two things alone should, you know, land you checks in the NBA, especially with his, um, his measurements. Um, I just question his overall feel for the game, though. And like, it, it, it just, he looks like he's playing a thousand miles an hour. And um, yeah, his, his feel for the game is a little off. I don't want to be the negative guy, but you know, it's like um, he plays hard and he's athletic. What is he good at? So yeah. like, he's raw. He's, he's probably what, 19, 20. I, I get that. I'm not shooting the kids, shoot you down. But you know, outside of playing hard and having a motor, like what is what is what is he skilled at? I, I get that. In my notes, I had, you know, the the first, and I don't want to say negative, but areas of improvement I had is that he has a high, high tendency to play out of control. But as far as like the skill set, which I think can be taught, but let's just go with his God given talent. He is a freak athlete, very bouncy. I think he has one of the better first steps in this draft. And what are your thoughts on him as, as an NBA athlete? I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's top tier. It, he, he jumps, he gets good lift on his jump shot when he shoots the pull-up jumper, you know, he can play off the ball. He cuts, you know, in transition, he should be a blur. Um, yeah. Like, again, you said the athleticism is going to translate. That's definitely not the problem with him so you mentioned something that i think is what makes him an intriguing prospect we talked about his hustle plays and his effort and his motor but i think he has potential to be a good pull-up shooter just because he has the first step and the elevation to be able to stop and just shoot over the top of smaller defenders i mean he'll have to work on his shooting that's one of the areas that He'll, he'll need to work on. I mean, he only shot like 27% from three and mm -hmm. just overall as, as a jump shooter, but there aren't a lot of guys that have his athleticism first step and the ability, ability to stop on a dime and shoot over the top of guys. I think best, best case scenario, you get a uh, Zach Levine. I think Zach was now remember Zach was kind of raw coming in. Zach didn't put up great numbers. I'm not saying Keon is going to be a 25, 26 point per game score, but I think as far as like from athleticism alone, I think they're similar. The skill set is what he's going to have to, to work on. I think, I think Zach had a better feel for the game. Yeah. Grant, Cause he, he played a little bit of point guard and yeah, yeah they were trying skill. to make him a point. So yeah, I, I agree with that, but I'm just talking about athleticism. I see Josh a Kogi, a Kogi, a Kogi. So like Josh again, he he dominated dominated ACC as a seventeen year old. He averaged sixteen five and something, and it was just pure lethal first step. I'm great in transition. I might make a three. I play super hard. So like, I think again, you know, if he doesn't get if his skills don't catch up to you know what you think his ceiling may be, I think he may be Josh Akogi, and you know. I mean, even then, like, he didn't – I think you see what he said, shot 27% from three. 27% from three. Two years, Josh Akogi shot 38% from three on low 
low uh, volume at Georgia Tech. And again, that didn't translate. But, you know, playing hard, playing defense, that's what he's, he's uh, hung his hat on in the NBA. So that's what I saw. But I mean, I, I tend to, uh, I don't know. I can't, it's kind of hard to tell what somebody is going to be. But Josh was on bad teams though, wasn't he? I mean, that really wasn't his fault. He was like a three-star recruit. Per 40 minute numbers, they're really, really close. You know, I'm not a big fan of those per 40. I understand, but Josh played more minutes. So I, you know, it was close. I would have been nice per 40. (laughs) With Johnson, he shot 35% overall on jump shots, which is about average. Not bad. 31% on pull-up jumpers. But I still think that he has the ability to become a, you know, better shooter. He shot 38% on catch and shoot opportunities, which is good. I mean, it was on 39 attempts. So that's not a bad, you know, that's not a bad uh, volume and and percentage. According to Synergy, he shot 47% uh, on unguarded catch and shoot attempts. So I'm going to buy into his upside as a shooter, even though the numbers don't necessarily say it. Um, I mean, on guarded shots, he was six out of 20. And this is just catch and shoot jumpers. Off the dribble, yeah. Even though I said I think he has an upside at it, he shot 32% on, or a little under 32% on jump shots off the dribble. So I'm just saying, like, I see the potential if he can, because of his ability to drive, stop and pop and elevate. But I wanted to ask you about his upside, putting the ball on the floor. I know right now I just see a straight line driver. I don't see a lot of offensive creativity, but I think that with his speed, if he can work on his handle, he could be like a devastating driver especially off screens I don't think he's going to be a guy where you can just kind of clear the floor out and say you know go go get me a bucket but you give him a ball screen I mean he's going to be right at the rim and and you give him a ball screen we're going under it every single time I, I definitely agree but if he can work on that I think that his speed or even if he's becomes a decent shooter his ability to attack closeouts and make you pay I, I think that there's a lot of potential there. I see someone that's going to eat and transition in the half court. They're going to dare him to shoot as long as he can't shoot. Um, kind of like, you know, rookie year, Isaac Okoro. They dare him to shoot. Yep. So, you know, if you can't shoot in 2021, man, good luck, especially as a wing, you know? So we, we both have experienced training players. We just – trained an NBA player, helped him recover a couple of weeks ago. We've worked with guys that played at high levels all over Europe. If you were in charge of his training for the summer, what's your game plan? Um, first things first, I'm just trying to nail down the catch and shoot corner three. Let's see if you can make threes and that way you can attack these closeouts and, and, and use your athleticism. Um, if, he can, if he can hang his hat on knocking down open shots, then everything else opens up from there. Like I said, I really didn't see much in the half court from him to to buy into him, you know, being a shot creator. But, you know, again, he's young, so I don't expect that for him to, to have that polish, you know, this time next year. But, you know, if there's one thing you can do, it's play defense and, well, two things, play defense and make open jump shots. You know, you'll get your opportunities in transition. The NBA is a fast game. But, again, if he can knock down threes, you know, that opens everything else for him. All right, so after you worked on knocking down shots, you know, if he's proven that he can knock down corner shots, what's the second area that you're working on with him? Um, Let's see if he can, you know, handle the ball and make plays. So, again, with him being the athlete that he is, you know, and – uh you know, he's got a nice, nice mechanics, especially on the pull-up jump, jump shot. You know, let's see if he, if he can become crafty. Let's see if he can play some pick and roll. Um, even if it's simple, like Patrick Williams right now doesn't have a big bag of tricks, but he has a spot on the floor where he can get to. He can get to the elbow. You know, he's going to jump super high and he's going to elevate 
and I think he's making you know enough shots to keep the defense honest right now. Mm-hmm. He's like 19. So I don't expect I don't even know if he's 19. He right. still might um, be 18. I don't expect him to fulfill the Kawhi prophecy that he's supposed to feel. But you know, he knows where his spots on the floor are right now. And he's added a little floater. So if Keon Johnson can 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 follow that same path, then you know, we'll see what happens. But a lot of it is showing the coaches what you can do if they can trust you to do it. Um so again, I'm not saying all he has to do this off season or whatever is shoot threes, but you know, mix in some ball handling, of course, and just figure out where he can score at and where where are his spots on the floor where he can be effective. Makes sense. If I'm in charge of his training, we're knocking down corner threes, sliding threes. After we we do that, playing a lot of one on one. I'm trying to find another guy that wants to compete and we're playing one-on-one I mean every day to complete the workout we'll do threes you know we'll work on pick and roll shots you know shooting off the dribble and and you know just becoming a a threat out of ball screens but after that one-on-one five spots to ten every day because I think that that would help him improve his offensive creativity which I don't know if it's going to be his main thing, but I think it would help him because I figure, you know, with, with the work, you can become a better shooter. And then you need the next thing to, to open everything up after that as far as attacking closeouts. And if you can get him to be a good isolation player with his first step, you know, get him to work on, you know, some floaters and touch shots. But I just think a lot of one-on-one, a lot of just working on, being crafty and and you know having some offensive creativity that would be my game plan i mean just watching him play it just feels like he's just been the most athletic dude on the court his whole life and he's never had to yeah and he's never had to be skilled so i don't i don't know how much skill you can add to somebody who's never had to be skilled well i i use an example and darius miles when Darius first got any, I know Darius is six nine, six ten, and he even said in a recent podcast when he first got to the league, he knew that he was more athletic than everybody else. He could handle for his size, and that he was going to be great in transition. And he said that later on, once he started to add offensive game and add skills, that's when he got hurt. And I remember the game. I mean, you a basketball head. You may remember the game. Him and Melo went heads up and he gave Melo like 47. Yes. That was like him adding skill to his athleticism. It was like mid post, post up, fadeaway jump shots. And I see Keon as maybe like a smaller Darius Miles in a sense to where you got this, you know, these, this talent, you know, you got like this body of work to work with and I think Darius finally kind of like took it serious after you know bouncing around from LA to Cleveland he took it serious in Portland unfortunately he had some knee injuries that kind of ended his career right when he was trending upwards as an offensive player but I think with with Keon especially in today's NBA where scoring is so important I think if you if he just works on it and works on I think he could be good I mean look at Lou Dort even though Lou Dort was a scorer. Lou Dort played point guard in Arizona. He was a scorer. He wasn't a scorer last year. No, but he, he came in. He's playing football on defense, yep. and he made threes. And now that they're bad again, he's getting to show that. He, he can score. show that. So, yeah, that's probably a bad comparison. But, My yeah, I think. thing is with D-Miles, when you're 6'9 and you can dribble, you always have an advantage. Yep. When you're 6'3", 6'4", and you can't dribble like that. I don't. I can't think anybody who just added some wiggle in between. You know. Well, again, he was a great shooter. Bradley Bill added isolation one on one to his game. But he had the. He yeah. I mean that. I think he added all of that to his game. I think, I think Brad Bill is a one of one as far as adding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he already had the shooting. So even if he didn't add it, he was still going to be a 20 point scorer in my game. In my okay, opinion. but look at look at like Harrison Barnes. You can tell he works with his handles, but he always is just kind of stiff. Yeah, you know but he's going to still go gonna down to the back you down. Yeah, it's always going to be a two dribble guy, regardless. Or yep. like OJ Mayo. He 
when he tried to play point guard, he couldn't play point guard like that because he just, you know, and you can't tell me he didn't work on his game. It just, it's like 2K, man. Sometimes you got caps on what you can do. Yeah, I agree. All right, man, that wraps it up for Keon Johnson. Again, it's Raphael with my brother James. Stay tuned. We're going to have more of these quick, brief episodes where we give our opinion on different players. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. And we are out. Thank you.